Some of you uh, may have heard before that uh, LEDs can not only emit light, but they can sense light. So in order to investigate this a little further, I created this Arduino circuit. And what it does is it allows you to use an LED to both sense and emit light. This circuit is actually using the LED as a light monitor and then it's going turning around and emitting light when it senses that light levels are low. If you notice there's only two components here. There's a resistor and an LED to be able to get this sensing function. And I thought it'd be tricky to and it'd be kind of interesting to have the same LED do both instead of having one LED for a sensor and another one to um, emit light when light was what light levels got low or something like that. So anyway, this is what I came up with. And I even added a feature in this uh, particular program that lets me monitor not only, the, not only monitor the light levels, but to give me a sound when it detects light levels are low. I'll show you the code here in a minute. But this is a, a pretty interesting way to use an LED. One thing about this particular type of sensor, these LEDs being used as, a, as light sensors, is that they're extremely fast. They're like a phototransistor, only not as sensitive. I noticed that when I was playing with the LEDs earlier, that if you use white light, they respond well. And this particular LED is a orange LED. But if I illuminate the LED with a red light, like a red laser, it doesn't respond at all, or almost not at all. But it does respond to higher frequencies. And this makes sense because an LED basically takes electrons of a certain energy and turns them into a certain frequency of, of visible light. And in order to do the reverse, you have to take electrons and excite them to a high enough level to where they create a voltage. They go the other way. So you can only do this if you have a higher frequency of light, like green or ultraviolet. And I happen to have uh, three types of lasers, a red, a green, and a UV. And the green and UV cause the system to respond, cause the system to be able to detect light. But if I use red, I don't detect anything. And uh, the nice thing about something like this is if you really want to test it out, it's good to just take and disconnect the umbilical cord from the computer and get it to work on its own. So add a battery to it and take it out and play with it and show it to your friends. Uh, but don't leave it hooked up to the Arduino. I think that's a shame when people do these Arduino videos and they never show people freeing the Arduino from its uh, its USB umbilical cord and keeping it connected to the computer. There is some things you have to do with this circuit initially to get it to work right. You have to adjust the threshold voltage um, at which it turns on. It detects that light levels are lower than a certain value and turns on. So let's go look at the code. Okay, I've reconnected my USB connection to the computer so we can look at a few things here with the code. So if you look at the, uh, the way this is set up, I have two variables. One's called sensor value and one's called threshold. The threshold value is just really a value that um, determines when we want the thing to um, give us an indication that light levels are too low. So in my case, for this particular program, I set the threshold to 220, which was close to a number that I was getting. Um, with ambient light levels coming in. Um, I set up a serial connection so that we can use the serial monitor to view these things. So we have the serial.begin9600 sets up a, a connection between the Arduino and the computer so we can send data back and we have a, we're printing out that data. Now let's go ahead and view what we're getting when we do that. I'm going to go to the serial monitor and take a look and we're getting numbers there around 280 
Um, sometimes, occasionally, they drop down to about 225. The sensor is very fast, and one thing it's doing right now is it's looking at the intensity levels of the, the lights that I have installed in my room here, and they are actually LED lights. So they are actually being modulated at 60 cycles a second. So you'll see this, these values fluctuate quite a bit. You could put a, something in the code that averages out your signal, and so that's something you might want to look at if you want to play with this, because I, I think it's a lot of fun. You can learn a lot of things about programming by, by doing something like this. So I set my um, threshold to 220, um, so I got it below, way, way below those values that you're seeing fluctuating when it's reading normal light levels. So the way the program works, you might think it's odd that it's able to emit light and detect light at the same time, but really it's not doing both at the same time. What it's really doing is it's detecting light levels, and when it notices that the light levels are below a certain level, in my case, when the A to D converter gives me at the number 220, then what it does is it turns the analog input zero into an output. So initially that analog input is reading values, but most people don't know this, but you can take an analog output and turn it into a, a digital output as well as being able to read analog inputs. So what the code does here is as soon as it detects that light levels are low enough, it switches A0 using the pin mode to an output and then it writes a high to that particular pin. And it also creates a tone for the speaker on pin 9. Um, and then it delays for a second to keep the LED on for a second and it turns the analog input pin back into an input again so it continues to monitor light levels. So at this point it's, it's turned the LED off again and now it's monitoring for light levels and we have a little bit of a delay in there so it's, it delays enough to um, let everything settle down and goes right back around and starts doing it all over again. Reading light levels on A0 from the LED and on and on and on. So I think I hope you find this uh, exciting and, and something you can use, something that you might be interested in playing around with. I'm in the process of putting together an Arduino course and this is some of the fallout from that course and I'll let you know when everything's ready for the course um, but I'm I love to share what I'm, uh, what I'm doing while I'm coming up with these ideas. I've got many innovative ideas that you can use the Arduino with, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. I'm going to share some more of these in the future, in the near future. So have fun. Play around.